Every day you'd wake up and there'd be like a new, a new scene on the landscape. You'd have several muskox. We see muskox regularly. Sometimes we get a pretty good show. Small herds of caribou around, uh, individual animals here and there, and they're just constantly drifting across the landscape. Raven Bluff is a unique landform, to say the least. You can really see how these prehistoric hunters lived out there. I think the most interesting thing for me is that um, when we find one of these artifacts from thousands of years ago, it's been buried in the black soil for all those eons, and we might be the first people to touch it and bring it back into the light. I mean, every day you get up in the morning and you can look around and see, oh, okay, I've got, you know, a dozen caribou over there heading in this direction. I've got a couple of, you know, individuals there and there. And, and you know, you can look out and just say, okay, which one, which one would you like to try and pursue today? It's like time travel. If you can use your imagination to imagine the person who dropped it, what they looked like, what their language sounded like, what they had for dinner, you know, what kind of clothes they were wearing. From this vantage point, you know, they'd make their plan. They'd, they'd decide, okay, they're moving this way. Let's go over there and we'll get in front of them. And, because these guys didn't have rifles, obviously. They had, you know, short-range weapons, probably uh, spears. They may have set traps, snares, who knows. And we think that they were camping here because they had a great view of the caribou herds and stuff that wandered by so they could hunt them. And we're just digging through 10 centimeters at a time in careful quadrants to try to find these things and figure out more about the past. We have part of their toolkit. We've got the most, well, one of the most durable parts, the stone part. An example of a, a stone, it's a chert, which makes a great tool. You can you crack it open and make all kinds of blades and knives and projectile points, which is science talk for spearhead or arrowhead. <clears throat> but since they don't know if it was a spear or an arrow, they have to call it a projectile point. We've got weapon tips, we've got broken weapon tips. And they're in the size that indicates it's a throwing or a thrusting spear. You could use it however. Hi, I'm Carl Horines. I'm a third and fourth grade teacher from Colorado. Excited to be included in this um, archaeology project up in Alaska. I'm a, I guess I'm officially a volunteer with the BLM, but I got into this project through the Polar Trek program which is a neat uh, program that teams teachers up with researchers. Polar Trek, that one was pretty easy for us because yeah, we want people to know what we're doing, especially students. Archeology, span we usually do pretty good with folks, but we want to get the information to the students and to academics and to the young kids. And we wanna show them, you know, these are real jobs. Boy, archeology span is an amazing thing to spend your time on, these folks are committed to carefully investigating ancient people's garbage and really it's just fragments of the garbage they left behind. And you can really do that. You really can go out and fly around in helicopters and land on mountaintops and chase off grizzly bears and have big adventures and camp out in the Arctic. You know, you can do that. It's like a very complicated puzzle because you're looking at just a few pieces of the puzzle. You don't have all the pieces and you don't have a picture to look at and then you have to piece it all together and try to imagine how these people lived. So it's it's really, it's a daunting task, but I think if anyone can do it, these guys can. It was also really fun to have uh, sort of an outsider or newcomer's viewpoint here. Some Someone who saw the novelty and all the things that uh, those of us who've worked up here a long time take for granted. So that made us see those things again and was fun. And I hope to be able to bring that kind of uh, excitement back to my students in Denver with some mock digs in the garden plots at my school. Mm -hmm.